The X-Files seasons 10 and 11, or ill-advised reboots as their friends call them, came and went to decidedly mixed receptions. To some, certain episodes or aspects of the production harked back to the show's mid to late 90s glory days. Particular praise was heaped on the Monster of the Week episodes, but the continuation of the alien mythology storyline was given a big, brown, smelly, slightly hard and rather unpleasant thumbs down. One thing that's been missing since it returned was a truly scary story. Some of it verged on spooky, yes, but it was hardly the nail-biting stuff we'd come to know and love. In fact, whisper it, but some of the show's best episodes were also the most terrifying. Serial killers, otherworldly monsters, satanic cults, face-eating demons, Chris Carter and co would reliably have us scurrying behind the sofa and leaving hallway lights firmly on. I mean, not me of course, I'm big and brave, but still, my name is Adam Cleary and these are the 10 scariest X-Files episodes of all time. Number 10, Irresistible, Season 2, Episode 13. An unusual episode of a paranormal investigation show this in that Irresistible had no paranormal element to it whatsoever. It's just about a murderer called Donny, who's a death fetishist that kidnaps women, kills them, takes a lock of their hair and stores their fingers in his fridge. The episode also does a great job of exploring Scully's character and much of the tension comes from Donnie's fixation on her. Scully's subsequent attempts to deal with the case so soon after her abduction really ram home the peril as well. The scene of her hallucinating that he's a demon is absolutely pant-wetting, and Chris Carter's original script actually had Donnie down as a man who, um, yeah, who, um, diddles corpses. Fox didn't want that in the show, but still it's heavily implied. Number 9, Die Hand, Die Verletzt, Season 2, Episode 14. How do you follow a creepy episode about a death fetishist who works in a funeral home? Well, with an even creepier episode about a satanic cult of teachers who I think want to eat school kids. Die Hand, Die Verletzt is German for the hand that wounds, and that's exclusively what I'll be calling it henceforth. We start with an almost comical scene of the PTC standing in a circle and reciting satanic prayers. From there, however, the mood gets progressively darker. Story-wise, it's not particularly good, but it's the tone that carries the episode and certifiably gives you the chills. Most of said chills come courtesy of Mrs. Paddock, the substitute teacher from hell who keeps a human heart and eyes in her desk drawer. And voodoo! There's just loads and loads of voodoo, which is normally lame on television, but actually quite scary here. Number 8, Bad La, Season 8, Episode 10. The general consensus with the X-Files is that there is a noticeable drop in quality from Season 8 onwards. And while that may or may not be true, the show proved that it could still scare the bejesus out of us when it was called upon. A prime example of that is Bad La, an episode concerning an Indian amputee street beggar who doesn't take too kindly to people passing by him without parting with some change. Case in point, this jolly American businessman does just that, finds himself stalked to the toilet, dragged under the stall, and then, when he retires to the hotel, blood starts gushing from his orifices. Classic. If that's not enough, the beggar bursts out of another victim while Scully is performing an autopsy, because he has the ability to shrink himself down and enter your body. Now, alright, yes, the episode is not particularly fondly remembered by X-Files fans, but you're not telling me that's not scary. Number 7, Our Town, Season 2, Episode 24. You will never, and Adam Cleary means never, want to eat a KFC again after watching this episode. A truly scary instalment of the show that ponders the age-old question of, what if the local chicken factory was actually a front for a crazy cannibalistic cult? As any idiot knows, small towns of the secret are usually pretty creepy anyway, but when you throw in a genuinely terrifying, axe-wielding masked madman, the bar is raised somewhat. The scenes of said madman are undoubtedly scary, but it is the idea of the episode, more than any particular scene, that gets you. Things get a little cliched at times, yes, and there is a real sense of, oh god, here we go again when Scully is captured by the bad guys, but it's still an unsettling episode for pretty much its entire runtime. Number 6, Folie Adieu, Season 5, Episode 19. Now, anyone who has worked in a call centre can relate to the character of Gary Lambert. A man who, trapped in the world of his tiny office cubicle, starts to lose his grip on reality and begins to imagine that his otherwise decent boss is actually a giant monster bug type thing. So he does the only rational thing he can and he takes the entire building, including Mulder, hostage in order to prove a point. The episode originally looked ridiculous with the low-budget monster suit, but extensive editing somehow saved it. They removed it from all the scenes, animated it, then re-entered the thing with a speed blur and buzzing sound, with the end result being utterly petrifying. 
This is one of the rare occasions where you could actually believe that Mulder was in serious trouble and seeing him strapped down to a hospital bed while ostensibly going insane made for some nail-biting television. Number 5, Detour, Season 5, Episode 9. The TV spots for Detour posted a very, very scary question. How can you stop a predator that you can't see? That was the basic premise of the episode, which saw Mulder and Scully hunted in the woods by an invisible force. It was quite a unique concept, having Mulder and Scully stumble onto a case and then being pursued instead of pursuing, and for the most part it actually works. A big reason for this is because the invisible and unnamed creatures are genuinely quite frightening. One of the most unsettling things about them is their ability to blend into the environment, their faces just about being visible in the bark. There is a sense during the episode that our heroes are in very real danger thanks to this unseen threat, and the occasional shots of them opening their eyes while disguised in the tree get a certifiable ah! from me. The episode also has its tender moments though, and is probably best remembered for the scene in which Scully sings Joy to the World to Mulder while they camp out and try to stave off death. Number 4, The Host, Season 2, Episode 2. Now, this episode of The X-Files does for going to the bathroom what Jaws did for swimming in the ocean. The fear factor in this one is down solely to the episode's monster, Flukeman, a super-evolved fluke worm who dwells in the sewers of New Jersey. Again, this is one that could have been disastrous had it not been approached correctly. Now, on paper, a giant worm-like man who lives in the sewers is pretty much just how all my exes describe me. The costume too was apparently not really all that, but by waiting until the final few scenes to show the creature, the episode manages to maintain an element of suspense and fear throughout. The host is just fantastic B-movie fun with a memorable villain. The way Fluke Man moves and the pained noises he makes are deeply disturbing, and the suit isn't as bad as it could have been. Fans generally agree that he slash it was one of the strongest monsters of the week the series had, and that the host is one of the best episodes of the second season. And I mean, if nothing else, it's certainly one of the scariest. Number 3, Grotesque, Season 3, Episode 14. The cold open of this episode sets the tone for the entire rest of its run. At a live drawing class, a man is erratically scribbling out not the nude male model, but a gargoyle creature. While sharpening his pencil, he cuts himself and smears the blood on the picture. Later, he offs the model outside the building because apparently he was possessed by the thing and it made him do it. Mulder and Scully go to the man's studio where they find hidden gargoyle statues with, you guessed it, bodies hidden inside. As the episode wears on, Mulder gets more and more drawn in by the case, and he spends hours studying gargoyles in the library and begins to draw pictures himself. He even sculpts his own gargoyle statue in the now abandoned studio. It's one of the more psychological and dark episodes of the show, and one that contains one or two really scary bits, which are highlighted by some truly fantastic camera work and lighting. Surprisingly twisted episode this, and one that is to this day vastly underrated. Number 2, Home, Season 4, Episode 2. Now, Home is probably the most controversial episode in the show's history. It was the first to feature a viewer discretion warning due to its graphic content, and it is also the only episode to be rated TVMA. Now, that alone is upsetting to most of the audience. But then the episode centers around the Peacocks, a family of inbred farmers who live in a house straight out of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and they are terrifying. The scene in which they break into the sheriff's home and brutally kill him and his wife is one of the most shocking in the show's history. Johnny Mathis, whose song Wonderful Wonderful was supposed to be used during the scene, refused to allow the producers to use it because he was disgusted with the episode's content. And many others felt that this particular episode of the show was tasteless and that the peacocks, whose makeup was really something by the way, were too scary for network television. <laughs> Crybabies. Number 1, Tombs and Squeeze. Season 1, Episodes 3 and 21. Now one thing that goes completely underappreciated about The X-Files was the fact that it wasted precisely zero time in getting super, super creepy. They introduced Eugene Victor Toombs, the most unsettling and sinister villain in the show's history, in only the third episode. Toombs, you see, had a special talent, in that he could squeeze himself through the smallest gap, infiltrating people's homes. And why did he want to squeeze into people's homes? To harvest their livers, of course! Toombs was a genetic mutant who wakes up every 30 years to feed. Now that's a creepy enough concept, but the character was made truly scary because of the performance of Doug Hutchinson. 
He was so outstanding and effective in this role that they brought him back later in the series, where once again he knocked it out of the park in the creepiest way possible. Squeeze was the show's first foray into horror and the episode that really, really sold the show to the masses. So there you have it, those are the 10 scariest episodes of The X-Files. Read to you by a man who still jumps clean out of his skin if he so much as sees anybody loitering around an empty car park wearing a big coat. Let me know what you made of it all in the comments below, and of course don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. In the meantime though, thank you so much for watching. I have of course been Adam Cleary, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.